Hello dear student good morning i myself dr s k anwar ali department of commerce karim city college student you remembered that in the previous class we discussed about the residential status of an individual and we have already discussed the half of the residential status chapter today i am going to explain the second part of the residential status in which b part residential status of hindu undivided family we have already discussed the meaning of hindu undivided family here we will also take it as a ordinary resident in india jis tarah hum logon ne इंडिविजुअल के बारे में ऑर्डिनरी रेजिडेंट और दूसरे कैटेगरीज नॉन रेजिडेंट को डिस्कस किया था वैसे यहां भी है एंड पहला द फर्स्ट वन इज ऑर्डिनरी रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया ऑर्डिनरी ऑर्डिनरी रेजिडेंट इज फॉर हिंदू इंडिविड फैमिली ड्यूरिंग द प्रीवियस ईयर अ हिंदू अनडिवाइडेड फैमिली is said to be an ordinary resident in india if it satisfied the following conditions and what are those condition number 1 if it is controlled and managed fully or partially from india in the relevant previous year yani ke previous year mein ye puri tarah se india se hi control and manage hota hai number 2 if a part of the hindu undivided family is situated in india second condition kya hoga ke hindu undivided family ka part mane aadha kuch log india mein hai and number 3 if the head or karta or manager of the hindu undivided family satisfy both the additional condition of section 66a we have already discussed in detail what is section 6 and 6a it is the additional conditions so for being ordinarily resident in india he must satisfied both the additional condition of section 6 sub section 6a number 2 not ordinary resident in india if the head or karta of hindu undivided family does not satisfy the following two conditions number 1 he has been resident in india for at least 2 year out of the 10 previous years immediately preceding the relevant previous year pichle 10 saalon mein kam se kam वो दो साल इंडिया में रहा हो एंड नंबर टू इफ ही हैज स्टेड इन इंडिया फॉर ए पीरियड ऑफ सेवन थर्टी डेज और मोर ड्यूरिंग सेवन प्रीवियस ईयर इमीडिएटली प्रीसीडिंग द रिलीवेंट प्रीवियस ईयर पिछले सात सालों में वो कम से कम सात सौ तीस दिन इंडिया में रहा हो तो वो नॉट ऑर्डिनरी रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया कहलाएगा number 3 non resident of india non resident of india ke liye a hindu undivided family will be non resident in india during the previous year if its control and management is situated fully outside india or in other words its control and management is not situated in india at all इसमें देख रहे हैं एकदम क्लियर है कि हिंदू अनडिवाइडेड फैमिली को हम लोग नॉन रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया उस वक्त कहेंगे जब ये पूरी तरह से कंट्रोल किया जा रहा है हिंदुस्तान से बाहर हमारे कंट्री से बाहर या दूसरे शब्द में कह सकते हैं कि ये आउट ऑफ कंट्री सिचुएटेड है इसको हम लोग नॉन रेजिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया कहेंगे नंबर सी रेजिडेंट residence of a firm and an 
एंड एन एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन जिसको हम लोग शॉर्ट में ए ओ पी कहते हैं इसमें दो ही होता है नंबर वन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया अ फॉर्म और एन एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन विल बी रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया इफ इट्स कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट फुल्ली और पार्शियली सिचुएटेड इन इंडिया हियर द रेसिडेंस ऑफ पार्टनर डज नॉट हैव एनी इम्पैक्ट इससे क्लियर है कि रेसिडेंस ऑफ अ फॉर्म एन एसोसिएशन ऑफ ऑफ पर्सन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया उस वक्त रहेगा जब ये पूरी तरह से या पार्शियली मैनेजमेंट इसका होता है या कंट्रोल होता है इंडिया में इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है कि इसके पार्टनर जो है ना वो कहाँ है एंड नंबर टू नॉन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया अ फॉर्म और एन एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन विल बी नॉन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया इफ इट्स कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट इज सिचुएटेड फुल्ली आउटसाइड इंडिया यानी कि अगर ये इंडिया के बाहर में सिचुएटेड है तो इसको हम लोग नॉन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया कहेंगे अब वहीं से इसका मैनेजमेंट हो रहा होगा नंबर डी रेसिडेंस ऑफ कंपनी इसमें भी दो ही है नंबर वन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया अ कंपनी विल बी रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया इन ए प्रीवियस ईयर इफ इट फुलफिल एनी वन कंडीशन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग नंबर ए इट इज एन इंडियन कंपनी तो अगर वो इंडियन कंपनी है या नंबर बी इफ द कंपनी इज फॉरेन कंपनी प्लेस ऑफ इफेक्टिव मैनेजमेंट ऑफ फॉरेन कंपनी इज दैट ईयर इन इज इन इंडिया तो इसके बारे में देखिए कह रहा है कि नंबर वन या तो ये इंडियन कंपनी हो या अगर फॉरेन कंपनी है तो पूरी तरह से वो इंडिया में सिचुएटेड है और यही इसका काम काज चल रहा है नंबर टू नॉन रेजिडेंट इन इंडिया ड्यूरिंग ए प्रीवियस ईयर ए कंपनी इज नॉन रेजिडेंट इफ नंबर ए इट इज नॉट एन इंडियन कंपनी अगर ये इंडियन कंपनी नहीं है ये नॉन रेजिडेंट होगा या नंबर बी इन केस ऑफ फॉरेन कंपनी द कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द फॉरेन कंपनी इज सिचुएटेड फुल्ली और पार्शियली आउटसाइड इंडिया ये फॉरेन कंपनी है इसका कंट्रोल एंड मैनेजमेंट जो है वो फॉरेन कंपनी का जो सिचुएटेड है वो फुल्ली और पार्शियली आउटसाइड इंडिया वो आउटसाइड इंडिया में है एंड नंबर ई रेसिडेंस ऑफ एवरी अदर पर्सन द टर्म एवरी अदर पर्सन इंक्लूड्स लोकल अथॉरिटी एनी आर्टिफिशियल पर्सन स्टेचुटरी कॉरपोरेशन These cannot be non-resident, not ordinary resident. These are either resident or non-resident. ये ordinary resident नहीं होगा या या तो ये resident होगा या non-resident होगा रेसिडेंस ऑफ एवरी अदर पर्सन का मतलब होता है कोई भी स्टेचुटरी बॉडी जैसे ट्रस्ट हो गया या कोई लोग अपना एक कमिटी बनाते किसी काम को करने के लिए स्टेचुटरी सोसाइटी एक्ट के तहत बना लेते हैं इसको हम लोग बोलते हैं रेसिडेंस ऑफ एवरी अदर पर्सन इसी को हम लोग एवरी अदर पर्सन बोलते हैं बहुत सारे काम किए जाते हैं इसमें और इसके लिए है द रूल्स फॉर डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ रेसिडेंस ऑफ एवरी अदर पर्सन आर सेम एज रेसिडेंस ऑफ फॉर्म एंड एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन तो जैसा हम लोग फॉर्म का ये सब का किए थे वैसे इसका भी हम लोग कैलकुलेशन करते हैं रेजिडेंट और नॉन रेजिडेंट के लिए ना द टैक्स लाइबिलिटी ऑन वेरियस इनकम्स देखिए बहुत सारी इनकम है उसका टैक्स लाइबिलिटी कैसे होता है उसके लिए हम आपको एक चार्ट दे दे रहे हैं चार्ट के सो स्टूडेंट दिस इज द चार्ट वट आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन एंड दिस चार्ट विल हेल्प यू to decide whether the income of an ssc will be calculated under the various circumstances like uh, ordinary resident not ordinary resident and non resident number 1 income earned or accrued in india which is received in or outside india it is taxable in all the cases means it will be taxable in ordinary resident in case of not ordinary resident and non resident number 2 income deemed to be accrued or earned in india which is received outside india both are same but in first cases you have already received it and in this case you are supposed to receive deemed to be accrued means it is to be 
and it is to be received. So it is also taxable in all the cases. Number three, income received in India, which is earned on or accrued on accrued in or outside India. So it is also taxable in all the cases. Number four, income deemed to be received in India, which is earned or accrued outside India. So it is the income which is to uh, to be received in future which has already been earned or accrued outside India. It is also taxable in all the cases. Number five, income accrued and received outside India. It is taxable in case of ordinary resident only. In case of not ordinary resident and non-resident, not taxable. Means income accrued, means income has been earned in India, but received it out of India. Number six, income accrued and received outside India from any business etc which is controlled from India. So business or anything which is being controlled from India but the income has are accrued and received outside India it is taxable in first two cases and in the last non for non-resident it is not taxable and seven one is foreign income of past year on which income tax has not been charged brought to India in the previous year. The income tax has not been charged and it has been brought to India from abroad so it is not taxable in all the cases. Now I am going to explain some examples which will clear your concept. Number one I am taking Mr. Mahesh Kumar is an Indian citizen. He stayed in India from 2014-15 to 2017-18. He went outside India on 1-6-2018 on employment. He again stayed in India from 1-10-2018 to 15-11-2018. Determine his residential status for the assessment year 2019-20. So here you have to find out with the residential status of Mr. Mahesh who is an Indian citizen, so whether he is coming under or he is a resident or non-resident or ordinary resident. So a student, first of all, you will decide whether, whether the SSC is Indian citizen and the next one you will decide how many days he stays in India or he remains in India because on the basis of that you will decide regarding his residential status. So here, Mr. Mahesh is an Indian citizen. His previous year will be 2018-19, means from 1st 1, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, April 2018 to 31st March 2019. He went out of India for employment purposes on 1-6-2018. He stayed in India from 1-10-2018 to 15-11-2018. Altogether, he is remaining in India during the previous year, April 30 days, in May 31 days, June 1 day and October 31 days, November 15 days, altogether 188 days. Here Mr. Mahesh goes out of India for employment purposes, therefore exception to the basic rule will be applicable. Means we have to see whether he remains at least 182 days in place of the 60 days in the previous year but stayed in India for 108 days. So Mr. Mahesh is living in India in the previous year 108 days and we have to see whether he remains in India for 182 days or not is the exception because Mr. Mahesh is going out of India for employment purposes. So thus he does not fulfill any basic condition of section 6 of section 1 and Mr. Mahesh will be considered as non-resident of India for the assessment year 2019-20. So make it very clear and keep it in your memory that if anybody or any individual is not fulfilling the basic condition definitely he will be considered as the non-resident of India. Example number two, Mr. Dhoni is original resident of Jharkhand state 
India, he went to New, New Zealand on 12th March 2018 to take part in a cricket match and come back on uh, and come back on 26th April 2018 and again went for for this purpose on 30th June 2018 and returned on 31st August 2018 determine his residential status for the assessment in 2019-18 here again you will see regarding the residential status of Mr Dhoni whether he is a indian citizen or how long he remains in india solution mr dhoni is an indian citizen his previous year will be 2018 19 from 1st april 2018 to 31st march 2019 he stayed in india during the previous year altogether in april 5 days uh, in May 31 days, June 30 days, August 1 day, September 30 days, October 31st day 31 days, November 30 days, December uh, 31 days, January 31, February 28, March 31st altogether 279 days. So he remains in India for 279 days. Hence he satisfies the basic condition of 182 days under section 6 sub section 1. since he is original resident of india hence he must be satisfying the additional condition of section 6 sub section 6a hence he will be treated as ordinary resident for the assessment year 2019-20 is friend now i am taking the another example number 3 in which we will discuss about the income which is taxable under the uh, in case of resident non resident ordinary resident like that so i am taking one example income of shri sanjay bansal of the previous year is as follows compute his taxable income for the assessment year 2019 20 if he is a resident number 2 not ordinary resident and number 3 non resident what are his income number 1 loss from house property situated in canada it is a loss 20000 income from house property in india computed 15000 income from business in india 40000 loss from business in australia 25000 income from business in australia which is controlled from there 50000 interest on indian debentures uh, 8000 salary received in india 1 lakh so these are the different categories of income or different types of income of shri sanjay bansal we have to calculate his residency and under this comes circumstances means the resident not an ordinary resident and non resident it means he assume that shri bans shri sanjay bansal he is resident what will happen if he is not ordinary resident what will happen if he is non resident it means if he is resident then how the income will be calculated if he is not ordinary resident how the income will be calculated and if he is non resident how the income will be calculated so we will prepare here the chart computation of taxable income of sanjay bansal for the assessment year 2019 20 so it is a chart first loss from house property in canada so it is taxable in case of ordinary resident only if the ssc is not ordinary resident non resident it will not be taxable number 2 income from house property in india in all cases it is taxable income from business in india in all cases it is taxable and loss from business in australia it is taxable in case of ordinary resident only in fifth income from business in australia it is taxable under the ordinary resident only interest on debentures of indian government it is taxable in all the cases 
and like that the salary received in India is taxable in all the cases. So here the total income of the SSC if he is considered to be ordinary resident his total income will be 1,68,000 after deducting the losses whatever loss held. And if he is considered to be not ordinary resident his total income will be 1,63,000 and in case of non-resident the same amount 1,63,000 rupees will be calculated. So in both the cases 1,63,000 in case of ordinary resident it will be 1,68,000. So with the help of the chart we have calculated this amount. Thank you.